first, as always, let's go over the specs of the instrument. We have here a 7-string JP7. It has a basswood body, and this is the model that has the all rosewood neck, also with the rosewood fingerboard, and 24 stainless steel frets. We have these awesome locking tuners with the perloid tuning buttons. We have DiMarzio Crunch Lab and Liquifier pickups. And I should note that this is the model that is not considered the loaded version. It has no piezo. It is just three-way toggle, volume, tone, done. End of story. Also, no shield inlay on the first fret. So let me explain something right off the bat. One of the things that I love, love, love on certain guitars is an all rosewood neck. I love all rosewood necks so much that I insisted my very first custom instrument, my beloved Hoppus 8FF, had to have an all rosewood neck on it. I love the feel, I love the tone it provides, and what initially inspired my love for the all rosewood neck was playing a music man that had one. So here we are kind of coming full circle. I have the opportunity to review a music man model that has the rosewood neck and it really is a wonderful pleasure to play on this thing again. It has such a smooth neck on it. You can definitely tell it is made for blisteringly fast lead runs, uh, fast riffage as well. The 15 inch radius is comfortable. It's a little bit flatter than what I'm typically used to, but at the same time, it's no adjustment time whatsoever. If you're typically used to 12 inch radiuses, or if you're typically used to something along the 16 to 20 inch radius, no problem. This is right square in the middle. It's very, very easy to get acclimated to. The Neck, as I said before, is practically built for speed. It's really, really easy to do super fast runs on it. The fret work is very, very nicely done. Most of you guys know that I usually have a bone to pick with regards to the fret edges on various instruments. This, I'll be honest with you, is no exception. I do have a bone to pick about the fret work, but it's for the exact opposite reasons. Normally when I have a gripe about the fret edges on an instrument I'm reviewing, it's because they're too jagged. They stick out from the edge of the fretboard and they tend to be very, very uncomfortable to play. Some of you guys have mentioned that this could be down to humidity. I would like to suggest that a lot of times it's down to builders not properly kiln drying their supplies. That being said, this guitar is the exact opposite. The fretwork is really, really nice. It's nice and smooth along the edges of the fretboard. The polishing work and the crowning is mwah, magnifique. However, what I do have a problem with is that the edges of the frets are rolled back so far that when you're playing lead lines, you get so precariously close to the edge of the fretboard that that high E string just slides right off. So it's definitely something that takes some getting used to and it takes getting a little bit more precise with your dexterity. Um, it's not, that's not necessarily a bad thing, but I would say that that does tend to make this instrument a little bit less inspiring than it could be. I would much prefer to have just a little bit less of the rolled edge and not have to worry about that sucker popping off. Some other things that I don't really care for. I know that this is a proprietary designed bridge designed by Music Man for John Petrucci. I fucking hate this bridge. I just cannot stand it. I like the fact that the whammy bar swings freely like that. I like the thickness of the whammy bar. It is very, very reminiscent of Floyd Rose style. So if you're used to playing a Floyd, that makes it a little bit easier to get used to. However, I have had just a bear of a time keeping this fucking thing in tune long enough to record a song and produce a video with this instrument. So I'm just going to say it. I'm not impressed with this bridge. Some of you guys may find it to be okay. Some of you guys would be like, well, just block it off. Who needs a trim anyway? 
I like using a trim. So for me, that's kind of a turn off to know that if I just bang on this just a little bit, it goes all out of whack. The other thing that I do not care for on this guitar as far as the components go, I don't like this switch necessarily. It's just such that it's close enough to the body of the instrument and just kind of like has minimal movement. But with how short that the switch is, it does make it a little uncomfortable to be constantly hitting the body as I'm trying to switch back and forth between the neck and the bridge pickup. I understand that that's something that some of you guys are probably going to be like, well, whatever, dude, I dig it. Hey, no problem. Whatever floats your boat. Me, myself, I would prefer if the switch was just a little bit higher up and if it had more movement to it. Like, it feels like when I hit this thing, it's so minute of a movement that it's just kind of difficult to determine, like, if I hit it far enough, if I did what I wanted to do with it. Um, another thing about that switch is that I don't like how precarious it is to the pickups. When I'm playing, when I'm chugging along, I have a tendency to kind of catch it with my pinky finger. And I like playing the way I like to play. I would rather not have to adjust that aspect of it. Now that being said, there are some really nice things about this instrument though too. I love the knobs on the volume and tone control. I think they're a really cool design, how that just has like that little kind of dome shape, but it has the rubber grips on it, which make it super easy to grab hold of it and roll it back and forth. Um, I love the locking tuners. I feel like they were fairly easy to use when I was doing a setup on this instrument and changing the strings. Those components I feel are very, very nice. Now, something that I don't care for on this instrument at all, I'm sorry, I know there are some people out there that really, really like these things, but these pickups suck, flat out. I like DiMarzio, I think that they put out some really, really great stuff. God knows, I love a good PAF Pro, I love the Blaze, I love the Steve Special, I love the Aaron Nortons, I love the Nortons, I love the Tone Zone, I love the Humbucker from Hell. However... The Crunch Lab and the Liquifier are just so lacking. You know, it, it the Crunch Lab in particular just sounds really, really mushy when you're playing any sort of rhythm tones on it. When you're playing something that requires a bit more articulation, it honestly just kind of gets even worse from there. Now the neck pickup, that being said, is a little bit more redeemable. It, it does sound like a nice modern neck pickup. It's fairly fluid, even for being in a guitar that has 24 frets. Um, and as much as I don't care for the bridge pickup, it does pair nicely with the bridge pickup. <laughs> Not bad. There's definitely something lacking there in terms of... Well, actually, I wouldn't even say lacking. I would say that there's a little too much brightness in that neck pickup. Um, that being said, it's still usable. I just... 
I, I just don't care for it. I would rather my pickups have a little bit more balls than this. And if anything, this is proof positive that, hey, guys, just because your heroes use it doesn't mean it's worth a fuck. So my overall impression of the instrument is, despite my misgivings, is still a positive one. I do like this instrument. I think that it is lacking a lot in terms of certain things here or there. I think considering the price point, I find a little bit more enjoyment from like a Jeff Loomis model Schecter or from that UV70P from Ibanez that I reviewed a few videos back. Um, this thing, it just doesn't have it, whatever that it is, whatever that X factor is. It plays decent enough. It sounds pretty good. I think that the basswood body is decent enough, but I, I think I would prefer if it had either a swamp ash body or an alder body, something that was a little bit more well-rounded in tone, but had a little bit more emphases in certain frequencies. Like how alder is pretty much, it's, it's a more of a brighter wood, but at the same time, there's still plenty of mids. There's enough low end that you can still get some decent chunk going to it. I think that would have paired a lot better with the all rosewood neck than a basswood body does. Um, as it stands, it is a pretty dead instrument when you're playing it acoustically. It, it is choked out a little bit by the finish. It has a little bit of oomph to it, but it's lacking. It's just lacking. And when you're playing it, it's, it's cool enough, but it just doesn't inspire me like some other instruments I've played has. I don't really know any other better way of articulating it to you that whatever that X factor is, I don't really see this thing as having it. So many awesome instruments from Music Man that smoke this thing is a little sad, honestly. You know, if I can pick up just a plain old Axis, or if I can pick up a, like a Majesty or a JP-13, and this thing gets just absolutely slaughtered. It's just a little bit of a letdown, especially for a guitar that has one of my favorite uh, favorite components, favorite specs on it. Is it still an incredible bang for your buck and you get a lot of good stuff on here? And for most players, it's probably going to be maybe one of the best instruments they've ever owned? Yes. So before we go, let me tell you about what I'm drinking today. This is from Tira Nina, which you'll remember I've reviewed a previous beer from. This is called the Dirty Old Man Imperial Rye Porter, aged in rye whiskey barrels. It has a really, really nice malty aroma. You can definitely smell like that kind of rye whiskey flavor in the aroma. It's a little dry from the rye. I'm a poet and didn't know it. But you can definitely taste the barrel aging. Um, although that being said, with regards to like other barrel aged beers I've had, this is much, much more subtle, which makes this actually a little bit smoother of a drink. The, um, the flavor also... The flavor also has subtle notes of chocolate and a lot of notes of malt in there too. But overall, it's it's a nice, smooth beer, uh, especially for a porter. And I rather enjoy this quite a bit. Check them out, Tiranina. So thank you so much for watching this video. There's plenty more unbiased gear reviews to come, as well as various other videos that I'm going to eventually get around to. Please keep tuning in. Please hit that subscribe button. Please like this video. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, leave them in the comment section below. Who knows? Maybe if your question is just crazy enough or just involved enough, I might even just do another Ask Arnold video specifically for your question. But as always, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this video. And 
I'll see you around the next one. Thank you so much.